Hello, I'm Karen and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you how to crochet my gratitude clock. Um, I'm also going to share with you how you can actually make it into a cushion, but I just thought that you'd like to just to see this. This is actually a working clock. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is just going to just move this one out of the way and share. So let's just put that over there. Okay, um, so the reason why it's called a gratitude clock is because the pattern is actually called gratitude. For those of you that have seen how um, I've been working out these patterns, you'll understand where I'm coming from. For those that you haven't, um, you can skip along if you don't want to know about this. But I actually discovered how I could actually turn words, I could break the actual letters apart and change them into actual crochet patterns. So this one is gratitude, so round one or row one is actually gratitude. So the abbreviations are C is a chain, um, the cross um, is a single crochet for in the US or a double crochet for in the UK. The plus sign is a half double crochet if you're in the US or a half treble in the UK. A straight line down is a double crochet in the US or a treble crochet in the UK. And the sideways one is a slip stitch in the US or a single crochet in the UK. Okay, so just so that you can understand how these actually work, what I'm just going to do is just do a little sample of the letter G. So if you actually watch my other videos where I've actually crocheted um, the actual alphabet, then you can actually see that I've broken all of the letters into, into sections and then show you how to actually crochet them together so you can actually make letters. So there you've got a GR or we can turn that around and make a T. And what I've done is I've literally broken them to, into pieces and so the C equals the chains, okay? Just so that you can just have a more of a visualization of that and then you put them that way around. So that would be a single crochet and that would be the half double or half treble, okay? So that's all of those there. If you don't want to make the clock, um, this is actually my very first um, gratitude cushion. I was crocheting a blanket um, where I was practicing my gratitude for the law of attraction and um, and this was my leftovers, so this is actually filled with all of the tail ends from the actual um, blanket that I made. And I wasn't entirely happy with it, but it was okay for my first ever start, and I used the happiness flower as a centerpiece. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to get my yarn, I'm just sharing with you, I'm actually using paint box yarn this time round. It's uh, simply um, double knit. Pick your palette, and honestly, you can get every colour of the rainbow from there. Absolutely beautiful yarn. I'm using a vintage hook today. This is my Aero hook, which is a four millimeter crochet hook. Um, I just thought I'd share with you as well. I do actually have a whole set of the Aero hooks. This is from about 1960s to 70s, um, made by Abel Morrill. <coughs> So let's just move all of those out of the way. I just need to move my clock because I don't want to damage that. I will share with you at the end of the video how you can actually um, make the clock and all the different pieces that you actually need. And um, the pattern is free in the description box below. As in most of my videos, it's not in my Etsy shop just yet, but my Etsy shop is called Cottage Cakes. For those that you want to go and see what few little patterns I have in there, that is my new goal to be able to um, publish those ones. Okay, so let's just get this pattern back just so that you can actually see the actual pattern as I work along. Just get my pen so we can cross off things as we go if you want me to see if we can do that. So this beginning piece, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so we're going to begin with a chain of nine. Let's just move the paper back out of the way so you can see better. Okay, so I'm just going to begin with a twist. You can begin with a slip knot um, or if you prefer. So we're going to do a chain of nine. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <clears throat> and then for the first, so we're going to skip the first chain, into the second chain we're going to do the single crochet if you're in the US or a double crochet if you're in the UK. So that's yarn over, pull through. And so we've got one single crochet or double and Two. Then the next bit of the pattern is to do three of the half double or half treble. So we want to go, oh sorry I've got squeaky yarn. <laughs> oh, I've split my yarn. One, two, three. 
and then we've got to do three double crochet if you're in the US or three treble crochet if you're in the UK so that's one two and three okay so that piece that you've made there like that is actually the word gratitude <clears throat> okay so to do row two what you need to do is you need to chain two turn your work over and then you're yarning over we're going to do the three double crochet because we're doing the opposite on the way back down so you want to do it right into the top of that other stitch that you've just made with that last one there so that's one two and three then we're going to drop down to the half double crochet stitch or the half treble depending where you're from we're doing three of those that's one two oh i've not gone underneath both pieces there three and then there's two single crochet at the end so that's one and underneath the two strands at the end if i can get it there okay so we've come back down so we're making that shape so row three you chain one you turn and then into the single crochet we're going to work a single crochet and so that's two of those then it's three <coughs> so that's one two just want a bit more yarn and three and then we want to do the double crochet or the treble depending where you're from so that's split my yarn again oh dear one two and underneath two strands at the very end three so I've done three rows, chain two, so it's just repetitive now, okay, but when you're going to change your colour, we're going to change it when we get to the centrepiece, so we need to do one, two, three, you can actually practice your um, affirmations um, with this pattern as well, but it's a little bit more awkward, and then we're doing half stitches, so that's one, two and three and then two of the smaller stitches the single crochet if you're in the US or double crochet if you're in the UK so every time I'm going to change over colour so you do four rows <clears throat> and then we get a different colour this is more of a like a um, caramel kind of colour so what we're going to do is just to chain over the yarn, we're just going to just literally do the chain one, turn, and then work the single crochet. It will be a bit loose on the end, but you can just pull your tail in and stuff that to, to tighten it up. And then we'll, so we do the next one. So that's two of those. And then we just keep repeating the pattern. Okay, so that's one, two, and three three of the double crochet or the treble crochet depending where you're from so that's two and make sure you go underneath two strands of yarn at the end hopefully you can see that there um there we go okay so you're just going to keep on doing that repetitively what you need to do is you keep on working until you've actually got yourself here's one i made earlier <laughs> um yeah this is in the same colours as the original um, clock so you end up so that you've actually got three of each of your colours so that's for like for your quarter of an hour so you've actually got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve sections and um, i finished on this um, lovely peachy colour so i'm just going to share with you how to actually finish at the end so I've, i'm just going to undo that stitch there so the last stitch is a single crochet as you work in the pattern to join you're going to do a chain one and turn then you're going to fold your work in half 
and you're going to go through the first single crochet on that side and then you're going to go through where you did your beginning chain on the other one so we want to go through the first stitch on there and we're just going to just slip stitch them together and you should have eight slip stitches to finish so that's two and three Four, five, six. Whoops, I've gone through the wrong part there. Seven, and then the last one, you've got to make sure you go underneath the two stitches at the end, and then you're going to go into the beginning piece where you, you've either got a slip knot. <laughs> slip knot or your um, twist at the end there so I just want my scissors oh, actually, have I left that long enough yeah I can just pull that one through so you just pull it through I didn't need the scissors there so then you, what you do is you actually you end up with your piece so you've got your circle okay then what you're going to do is all of these ends at the end there you're going to actually tie them all in knots so that they keep nice out of the way and oh okay then let's get the I've got, sorry I've left it over there all right so I've got my white yarn so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to so in the middle around here this is where we're going to work next so I'm just going to just begin with my twist and where's the join so you get the joined end and you start so that's where the join is and you're going to start at the very end of the stitch there and you're going to do a single crochets or a double crochet depending where you're from in every stitch at the end all the way around you'll count them as you go along you need to have 48 so that you know you've done it so what may happen you may get to this end piece there and you need to just slip stitch to the end and miss out a stitch because it looks like you can do another one but it's best to keep your 48 stitches so you're going whoop, so you're just going to single crochet all the way around in the center of there Oops, sorry was i showing <laughs> was i off camera then i hope it wasn't off camera i'm so sorry so you're single crocheting in at the end of there and then when you've got to the end of that this is the one that i've done earlier so i'm just going to share with you so this is my i love this one i love the colors on this this is one of my favorites and so um, on this one what I did is I started my stitches at the next piece along so that because it, when I got to here it was working into the stitch where um, I've done the join and then so we want to just jump over there and we're just going to single crochet to the end and then we've already where we've that's where I've already started a stitch even though it looks a bit wonky and we're going to just go into there we're just going to slip stitch to join at the end okay so that would be we've got a really long tail end on this one so then once you've actually got your um so this one you can just tie it in a knot as well so what i would do is get this piece and just bring it through that stitch so it's into the actual inside like that there don't know how tidy this is looking on here sorry there's no need to worry about it. I know there's lots and lots of tail ends but if you're going to use it as a cushion you can just cut them off and use it as stuffing but if you're going to use it um, as the actual clock you just tie up all of the ends and then you just cut them off so that they don't stick out at the very end the next row around I'm going to get the white again for this one so let's just undo this bit here um, if I can there and get the white just to show you so the next row what you're going to do is you're going to latch on to any one of your stitches and preferably not the one where you've done the join next door to it is a really good place to start okay and then you're going to do a chain of two then you're going to skip a stitch and half double crochet or half treble crochet 
all the way around so you're just literally going to skip a stitch half double crochet skip a stitch and half double crochet okay and so you're going to do that all the way around the middle of there so you'll end up with 24 stitches and it'll look something like that <laughs> and then from there let me just get um, this shade of purple so sorry I've got way too much stuff on my desk so then you just do the same thing again you're just going to get the end of your yarn wherever my end of my yarn is there it is and you do your twist to get onto there and then you look for where your joins are which mine is I don't even know can't even tell on that one it doesn't really matter I'm just going to go so you go what you could do is you go underneath the two top loops of the of a half double crochet pull that tight do a chain of two again and do exactly the same thing so you're going to skip the next stitch and then into the next one you work the half double crochet and when you join at the very end you're going to join into the second chain to when you actually do your joins all the way around so you skip one okay so this one will end up so you what you'll do is you'll just go down so you go 48 24 12 until you've got six until you've got your finished piece which I haven't got one in multi colors actually um I've got a plain one that I did Woo, that light was weird I thought I'd just do one in plain just so you can see what it looks like if you just do all of the same color just so that you haven't got so many tail ends if you don't want to do that so then when you've got your actual circle if you're going to make it into a cushion you need to get two pieces I'll show you how to do the edging on here so let's undo that little bit there because that's already come undone and what you do is you just so on this one you're going to join so you, you don't want to go over the post of the ones you want to go in between so it, you're going to just slip stitch on and then you're going to do chain two and then in between the actual um in your rows is where you'd actually join so you do a slip stitch do chain two get to the in between those there make sure you're matching it up to the ones at the back yeah and you just keep doing that so chain two and that'll give you this lovely um like a little frilled edge okay so that's what you're going to do so that'll make you your actual cushion and this one's just stuffed with just lots of tail ends um, so you've got a lovely little cushion I've already shared with you how you can actually put the happiness flower in the center so what I'm going to do now is just share with you how I actually made the actual framework the actual backing of the clock my pencil you need a pencil <laughs> um, okay so I used this is um, a cake board so it was silver there what I did is I cut out a piece of paper um, so that it was the same I just drew, drew around my board and then did that and then you fold it keep folding it into halves so I kept doing it that way around until I'd actually got where my center was and then I actually folded it all like into a cone shape and snipped off the end so that I've got a hole in the center so that on the back of the board you can then actually mark where your center piece is going to be make sure that's in the right place and you just do your little centerpiece so you've got your dot in the middle and then I got I just used a cup hook to start off with you need something underneath so that um, you can actually just have like your notepad or I actually use blue tack under mine I screwed that through first to make my first hole then I increased the size of the hole with a bigger screw then I went to an even bigger screw <laughs> until eventually I could actually poke the pencil through. The first clock I made, I just did it on one board. So when you actually glue your piece, so you would actually glue your piece, you do your edging um, all the way around. Um, this one's ended up a bit small. This was because I did it all in one colour yarn. And um, But what you do is you, when you're actually doing it, you, so you can actually stretch it out so it fits to the edge of your board. And 
um, I say it was a bit flimsy just to have one. So what I did is I actually glued two together. If you can see the edges of that, I made I made the holes first, then glued it together, so that then I could actually fit the clockwork pieces through. So this is actual um, what the clock piece is like, and you put that through the middle. Um, actually, I need. So what you do? So you would you put that through the middle? You get a little washer set. So I put the. Um, rubbery washer on top of that first put that through the hole then put the gold piece on and then you twist on your little screw to hold everything into place and then you get your clock hands which are really really delicate and you put those on and they literally slot so on your actual clock piece you've got different um, levels so the bigger hand goes on to the bigger piece and then the next one and then the actual second hand has got the pin in the top which slots into the top of there it is a little bit fiddly to do but if you want to do it it really obviously i'll show you the finished one again so this is so this one um oh and you need a battery obviously to put inside it so this one um i made i don't know let me just turn it over Ooh. And you can see that's where I was actually attempting to get it all level. <laughs> As you can see, by the time I finished, I had to move the actual clock. Um, what I did as well, we see, because I made a mistake, is realistically, I think it would have looked better if we'd have got the dark pieces. You know, when you're looking from a distance, the darker shades sort of flow nicely into there. I did the darker pieces on the edges on that. So, um, so that's how you actually fit it all together. This is actually a non-ticking clock, so it's really nice and quiet. And I'm just thinking if I've forgotten anything. Yep, so I think I've told you everything. I say the pattern's going to be in the description box below. It's just gratitude, literally the word gratitude, and you just make this up as you go. Um, and so these ones was all made. So this was um, the white yarn, obviously, which is um, a slightly thicker yarn. But what you do is, is you need PVA glue. So PVA glue to be able to stick this to the actual cake board itself. And as I stuck mine on, I just pulled it into place and held it there. And then um, you just squash something over the top. I just use some books just to help it stay in place. The other thing I wanted to share before I forget is the actual, <coughs> excuse me, the actual numbers. So your numbers will come on a plastic strip like this and you need what you need to do is like wiggle at them and then snap them off i noticed at the end when you do that at the very bottom of them it showed like a, a little gray section i don't know if you can see that on there so i used a sharpie pen to be able to just color those in so that they was nice and because when they snap off, they've got these little bits of... This one's easier to show. <coughs> Excuse me. You can see they've got these little plastic sticks. So I just used a pair of um, wire cutters to be able to cut those ones off. And to do the curves, because you want... When you're cutting it off... I'm just going to get the number three out, if I can get it out of the box. Um it's easier to have a curve to be able to cut it so it actually cuts nicely the gold ones do also have like a little bit of grey I've actually coloured that in with a bit of gold pen to try and make it look nice and but I'm not so impressed with the gold okay so there's all of your tips so that you can actually make yourself a beautiful clock or you can make your cushion depending on what you want to do it's up to you I'm just going to just bring the clock back just so you can see it one more time it's still ticking. This has had the battery in since um, I did this about Christmas time. Okay, so um, thank you for watching. Thank you for liking. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for subscribing. <clears throat> I do appreciate everything. All of my um, my subscribers. I'm getting closer and closer to the 100k, which is like one of my goals and my milestones to be able to reach. So I'd really, really, really am excited about that. And... Um, think i've covered everything so thank you for watching thank you for liking thank you for sharing thank you for subscribing and bye for now